it's early springtime in Tallahassee, and that means it's time for the Red Hills Horse Trials. Hi, I'm Missy Tuttle for On Location. On this episode, we're gonna take a look at all the hard work that goes into preparing for the event. Then we'll take you to the front row where the horses gracefully make their way through the events of the weekend. Let's take a look. Red Hills is an international level event. We get 20 to 25,000 spectators in three days, and it is a huge undertaking. We start around the end of, or the middle of February, and sometimes a little bit into January, getting uh, things mowed, making sure that we have trees and branches cut so that they're safe, making sure the roads are in good condition, making sure that the arenas are uh, prepared and seated. And so those, those things we start around uh, February. In addition to all of our setup, we have to come out here and groom. And we have to prepare all these dressage arenas with equipment and tillers and graders and uh, all of that kind of physical stuff. Sometimes the electric department gives us a little bit of assistance with some expertise, and certainly solid waste is out here, and they're out here at like four o'clock in the morning getting all the trash dumped. And generally, we have a lot of help uh, from a lot of the different city departments. Public Works helps us with uh, signage, putting up signage on the roads, and so it's a pretty good uh, involvement from the city from a lot of perspectives, a lot of areas, a lot of departments. My average day on Wednesday, meaning tomorrow, the horses will start coming in. So I'll, I'll come about 6.30 or 7 in the morning, and I'll be here in, long into the night, usually midnight, uh, Wednesday night, the same pattern on Thursday night until all the horses get in. Then we lock the fence and, and lock the place down. Then on event days, I'll, I'll start at uh, 6.30 in the morning to unlock the gates for the grooms and riders so they can come in and walk their horses and all that sort of stuff. And we'll stay until early evening, uh, 9 or 10 o'clock. Well, this is a three-day event, so we have three different uh, components. There's a cross-country, a um, dressage, which these arenas are for, and, for, and show jumping. And each of those particular uh, components has its own uh, footing issues and facility issues. And one of the things that I've been having to do over the many years is to learn how to prepare these arenas. Can't be too deep because it's interesting how the terminology is that they, they get sticky. So when your horse gets into something that's a little too deep, it kind of sticks and so it just doesn't ride as well. If it's too hard, then it's just too hard and it's hard on the horses, it's hard on the riders, it's uncomfortable. So we have gotten to the point where we pack all these arenas using a big roller that we see way off in the distance there that we use, we get from our streets department and we pack this like a piece of concrete. Just before the event, we will till the tops of these arenas to about one and a half to two inches. It's very critical because if you go too much deeper, it doesn't work. So we found that that is a perfect mix. And I've actually learned how to run on this arena and know if it's too deep or if it's too hard. And it's taken a long time because if somebody's gonna complain about a facility, it's gonna be this arena. It's gonna be dressage. And we've got to the point where we have fine tuned this and with a lot of help from the riders, you know, the competitors, we ask them, they come and ride it, they give us feedback. And over the years, we finally learned how to make the perfect dressage arena. Show jumping. 
The show jumping arena, um, it has to be nice and grassed. It has to um, be a particular size. Ours is about 300 by about 245 feet square. It's a little tight for a show jumping arena. And it has some topography, which is not uh, usual. A lot of the show jumping arenas are very flat. But ours is a little bit more challenging because it has topography. We, uh, early in the year, we plant it with grass because our grass here goes dormant. And so we plant it with rye grass. Sometimes we put in oats and wheat, which is a winter crop, just so that it has uh, some substance. It's nice and green. Then we have a crew. So every time the horse jumps over a jump, it can start to churn up the uh, ground. And so during breaks, we have a crew that goes out with fill material. And we'll go out and rake it, fill it up with some material to fill in those holes to make it safe and make it uh, rideable for all the rest of the competitors. So that's something we've finally, we've, we've learned how to do and I think we do that quite well uh, too. My name is Fuzzy Mayo. I'm the stadium jumping course designer for the Red Hills Horse Trials. My job is to set up the, the portable jumps and, to, and make them as difficult as possible without overphasing the horses and its safety is the main factor. From the time it gets off the truck until it's set up and decorated, it'll take me about five or six hours today. And then we'll adjust the, the jumps during the show. And it'll take about 30 minutes in between classes. And uh, in between the, the Saturday class and, and the Sunday class, it'll, we'll spend about four or five hours changing the course entirely. I bring different jumps every year and the course changes entirely every year. Oh, I'm very proud to be here. It's, it's a very exciting time for me. Cross country as an event evolved from things like fox hunting, where you're just crashing through the woods over whatever happens to be there. Uh, cross country is a, is a little more demanding, and so our challenge is to make that cross country course um, as fine groomed and perfect as we possibly can. The course this year is, is a really exciting course. I think we've got a good, fast flowing track for this piece of property. It's, a, it's quite a twisty, hilly piece of property. So that when they get out, they go out the start box, they, they can expect to have to pay attention all the way around, which is not always, not always the case. Um, everything here comes on them very, very fast and furious. It gives for a um, pretty exciting time for them and exciting time for the spectators watching. So we're, we're, we're excited to see it ride this year. Sometimes these horse riders come here very early. This is March. They've got the rest of the year to compete. This is very early. The horses haven't competed over the winter. They're kind of green, so to speak. They're, they're, they don't want to have their horses uh, injured by some uneven terrain. And uh, so we try to make it as uh, well prepared as possible to make sure that they're comfortable running their horses on this, on this course. So that's been a challenge for us. The city of Tallahassee, the Parks and Recs, um, are, f are phenomenal, the, what, they, what they put into uh, this event. It it's, makes life for me very, very easy when I, when I put a course on paper and invariably you put a course on paper and you come back and it's not quite what you wanted. Here it is always more than what I expect and so it makes me look good and, uh, <laughs> and uh, they, they put a lot of hours into it. Um, as I say, the whole community gets behind it, so they feel uh, obliged to, I think the Parks and Recs feel obliged to um, get behind it as well, and they, they put in a lot of hours. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll have more from the Red Hills Horse Trials. Until all our daughters are safe, Until all our children have families. Until all our families have homes. Until all our parents are cared for. We'll be here. Hey, Grandpa, I can hear the ocean. Think you could hear it on your new phone? Yes, I'm sure I could. 
Thanks to the FTRI Equipment Distribution Program, Florida residents who have hearing loss can qualify at no cost for a phone that lets you hear clearly when you make or receive a call. You know what's better than hearing the sound of the ocean? Hearing the sound of your voice on my new amplified phone. Contact FTRI to see if you qualify for a specialized phone. You won't have to shell out a dime. Character isn't developed overnight. It starts when children are small, from birth to five. What you as a parent do now will have a profound impact on the men and women your children will become. Think about that. You are your child's first teacher, and the Early Learning Coalition is here to help. To find out how the Early Learning Coalition can support you in your role as a parent, call us at 385-0504 or visit us on the web at www.elcbigbend.org. As city staff prepare the cross-country course for the horses, it takes a special team led by Corinne Mathis to make the course visually appealing to the spectators. Let's take a look. I'm Corinne Mathis and I've been working these Red Hill Horse Trials since they started about 15 years ago. In about the last six or eight years, I've been uh, taking care of doing all the decorating on the entire cross-country course. That involves a couple weeks ahead of time for planning, getting, uh, getting the plants ordered, going and picking them up, having them delivered, and taking them out by golf carts with all my workers to all the jumps and get it ready for the judges to approve by Thursday at 11 o'clock. I got it for this one, you can put it in the other one, okay? okay? Most of the flowers are just to enhance, to make it look nice for the spectators. We put them around a lot of the plants to brighten them up, and so the spectators have something pretty to look at, mainly in the areas out here where most of the spectators are. All the bushes, a lot of them are used to fill in under the jumps because they don't want the horses maybe to see daylight under there or on the sides. And I try to go with a little bit of the theme. If it's a water jump and it's gatory, I try to put a lot of palmettos and things like that in there. If it's uh, like we're doing one this year that's going to be more of a beach theme and has some gas lamps and, and we've got a pig pen area where we use pigs. I love to do all the props and all the fun stuff. I love to decorate it up. So. A lot of it's just for show, but some of the things that I do are required. So I'm pretty much told the requirements, or I, I kind of know a lot of them now. I've been doing it quite a bit, but they tell me the requirements and then I fill in with my stuff. You know, like some of the logs have a big gap underneath them and we have to fill that in with bushes and all, and that's, that's a requirement. It's visual for the horses. They don't want them, there may be a jump that they, that has a, uh, needs filled in with bushes underneath so the, it doesn't throw their eye off. So whenever they tell me what has to be done, I will do that. There's a certain height and certain things we can put around the jump that are safe for the horses and the rider that won't distract them. But we can't have anything like flapping balloons or, or signs in the way. That'll distract them. Um, a lot of the workers, I can't just have them go out and do them because they don't know where to place the stuff that won't be right. So I kind of supervise all of this. Put it at the corner of uh, the right one, right there. Now take that other bush you got right there. I, I start, as soon as they know where the course is going to be, I start mentally planning. And I'll come out here even before some of them are up, just about, and kind of eyeball where they're going to be and what's going to be there. So I kind of get a, an idea. Cause I, do a lot of, I, I do a lot of mental planning. I say I spend uh, a good solid two weeks ahead of time just do some mental planning and getting my pine straw orders and all that done. And then I'm out here probably, I started on Thursday when the plants were delivered, so from last Thursday, through this next Monday after the show, I'm here morning till night getting everything ready. Grab a couple more if you would. I have my daughter as my co-chair. Her name is Candace Uren. 
whenever she can, she's out here helping me, and that's great because I can't do a lot of the physical part anymore. The, she's strong, so she can do a lot of that. And I have, oh, probably about eight other people on my committee that come out, and they volunteer time whenever they can get here. And they start hauling the plants and everything out and arrange them for me. And then a friend of mine is, is our waterer. He goes around and waters all these plants every day on a cart. So, and then after that, as many workers that are on my committee, whatever time they can give, I can put them to work. And they come out mainly from here on. I need a lot of help. I actually started volunteering years ago. I mean, years ago, my daughter used to ride this type of riding, and uh, my husband and I would jump judge at all of the shows she went to all over the southeast, wherever she was. And then when this one started, of course, we started jump judging here, and I, that's what I started out doing was jump judging. And then I got more involved, love being out here, love all the people. We have a lot of good volunteers out here. So I just started helping put these things out, and then I inherited this job, so, and I just, I love doing it. I just. I look forward to Red Hills every year. It's being outdoors, meeting all the people, seeing the riders when they come through, and just all the friends you see, sometimes just once a year out here, but it's just, it's just fun to me, a lot of fun. If it was not for the city, we couldn't do this. They, they work their behinds off out here doing everything for us. Every time I have any kind of problem at all, I call one of them and they have it taken care of. They help me get the watering going and just everything. They are, they are invaluable. They are invaluable to me. Uh, probably to everybody, but I know they are to me because I've, I've had to use them a lot. And, and they never say no. They never act like it's a bother. They just, they're right here when I need them. And it's just wonderful. She takes care of making everything beautiful on cross country and on stadium. Gets all the plant material, makes sure that everything, all the, the jumps are all dressed up and the flowers are out there and they're all watered. And she does a fantastic job. And we couldn't make it look the way it looks without Corinne. And she's so nice to work with because she's just real pleasant. It's just a fun day, and I think we've got perfect weather, and I can't wait. <laughs> now that city staff and volunteers have completed the prep work, let's take a break. And when we come back, we'll follow the horses and riders as they compete in all three events of the Red Hills Horse Trials. Until all our daughters are safe. Until all our children have families until all our families have homes, until all our parents are cared for. We'll be here. Imagine a landscape of distinct natural beauty, a place where bees and butterflies move among the blossoms and birds find food and shelter where plants can thrive on rainfall and native soil and fertilizers and pesticides are almost unheard of. Now, imagine this place is your own Florida home. Visit plantrealflorida.org and learn how to add native plants to your landscape and bring home the beauty of the real Florida. The Florida Department of Transportation is teaming up with the city of Tallahassee to provide its toll-free 511 traveler information system. 511 offers real-time traffic reports on all of Florida's interstates, including I-10, toll roads, and other major metropolitan roadways. Travelers can call 511, visit fl511.com, register for My Florida 511 personalized services, or download the free 511 app on iTunes for traffic updates. Twitter users can also get the latest traffic info by following FL511 on Twitter. So buckle up, drive safely, and check 511 for FDOT's real-time traffic information. To get the horse ready for the event at the show, um, for dressage, it's more about how the horse looks. They get braided, um, we put studs in their feet, so um, they have traction, um, 
they have to be glistening, shiny. Um, so everything, every all the white hair needs to be really shiny white. Um, so there's a lot of um, kind of making the horse look pretty for that. Um, the cross country is more about making sure the horse is in good condition, nothing's wrong with it, you know, temperature is good. Um, and then there's more equipment involved, like safety equipment, boots to protect the horse, stuff like that. Um, and show jumping is kind of a combination of the two and just kind of keeping an eye on the horse all weekend and making sure that nothing seems abnormal or out of sorts. Eventing, three-day eventing or horse trials, it's a triathlon. First day is dressage, which is compulsory uh, patterns that you do, and you do it in front of judges. They give you a score. It's called a penalty score. That score you want to hold on to, the lowest places first, and then the second day you don't want to accumulate anything. And in the FEI this year, we're doing stadium second, so you don't want to roll any rails off in the colored poles in the ring. Otherwise, you add to that penalty score. And the third day for us with the FEI, under a new rule, is cross country in which you gallop ditches and rails, things that are permanent, and you want to get in on an optimum time and not have any stops or um, refusals at jumps. So at the end of three days or three phases, the lowest score wins. Eventing um, starts with dressage. You do that on day one. That is, the horses are moving in, on the flat. There's no jumping involved. There's a judge that sits at the head of the ring. Uh, every rider knows the test for their division. They all st study it and have the same test. They go in the ring and they do various movements at the letters. It's walk, trot, and canter kind of movements. The judge is going to look for a connection between the rider's legs to the mouth of the horse, that they are staying um, supple. It looks like the horse's head is down, and that's what is a good, um, that's just good movement on the horse's part. I just finished the dressage. It's the sport of three-day eventing, so you've got to do all three phases, and today was the dressage phase for me. Dressage is a little like, uh, like figure skating. Everybody's got to do the same set pattern, and each movement gets a score of between one to 10, and at the end, all those scores are tallied and uh, reduced to sort of an overall penalty score. This is really the first competition of the year where you, you know, if you're going to win it, you got to you got to put it down. Um, you got to put all three phases together. This has always been a kind of a, a big part of our preparations for international competitions, as it still is for most of these riders, because it's true the first kind of international feel that the guys have all year to be able to practice and get ready for some of the major championships later in the year. Another phase of a three-day event is cross-country. That's um, galloping across the grounds. There could be all the, that's jumping over logs, water, ditches. They have really beautiful jumps here at Red Hills. For cross-country, you need to um, jump all the jumps. You can't have the horse run out, stop, or if the rider falls off, you're done. One jump, um, if you have a stop, it's 20 points, so it's quite, quite uh, serious to have a stop. Also, you're judged on time, so you need to go as fast as you can, generally based on, depending on which level you're competing at.
everybody that comes to Red Hills knows that this track is number one on an awesome piece of terrain, but a very challenging piece of terrain. So it's a great track to come and really see where you're at. And I would say this is one that really lets you know how you're doing. It's a real challenge. Another phase of three day eventing is called a stadium. You are show jumping over the colored poles. The poles are in cups so they can roll off and fall very easily. It's very different than cross country. So in stadium, you're looking for the horse to be very careful and he jumps over the rails. If he tips a rail off, you get four points. So every time he tips a rail, you're getting four points. If he refuses, you get four points. It's also timed events. So if you go over the allowed time, you get penalized as well. So in the national level, you don't want any points added to your score. Well, I think that's the special thing about Heroes is the community involvement. It had, it had that feel right from the beginning. So now 15 years later, it really does have a, a true feel that you feel like you're coming to a sporting event. You're not just coming to a horse show. What really is gratifying is to see how the community and surrounding area have really taken Red Hills to heart. It's an event that grew into a small horse trial the first time around, and now it has grown into one of the top three events in the United States and one of the finest horse trials internationally. We're always held up, if you really want to do it right, do it like they do at Red Hills. Red Hills is my favorite event. It's, it's spectator friendly. Um, the city is very involved, and so it's a great, um, great event to come to. I mean, it's great to bring this level of competition into Tallahassee. I mean, just the quality of the riders and the horses who are here. I mean, you've got several past uh, Olympians here, both, uh, I'm trying to think, U.S. and Canadian Olympians are here. You know, really talented pairs of horses and riders, and it's, it's really neat that Red Hills can draw them all here. Well, that's a horse of a different color. If you happen to miss this year's Red Hills Horse Trials, keep your eyes open next spring because this is an event you don't want to miss. Thanks for watching. For WCOT, I'm Missy Tuttle, and we'll see you next time somewhere on location. Thank you.